finally, we can represent sets as binary search trees. We're going to define membership. So that was using the contains function. And now that we're representing a set as a binary search tree, contains will just traverse the tree. If the element is not the root, it can only be in either the left or the right branch, and you know which branch to look in based on the comparison. By focusing on one branch, we reduce the set by the size of the other branch, which, if the tree is roughly balanced, means that we're throwing away half the set with each step. So let's say this is our binary search tree, and we want to know is the number 9 in that set. If the set S is empty, then V is not there. If the root is V, then we found it, so it is there. But neither of those applies when we're looking for 9, and this is our tree set. Instead, we notice that the root is less than V, at which point we make a recursive call that contains only on the right branch, because we know if 9 is in the set, it's going to be somewhere in this right branch. And similarly, if we had noticed that the root was larger than V, we would only look in the left. Now in the recursive call, it turns out that s.root equals v, and so we can immediately return true. The order of growth depends on the structure of the tree. It's kind of, you have to do as much work as the height of the tree, because you traverse from branch to branch to branch, picking only one branch at a time. It turns out that a balanced tree has a height that's only logarithmic in the number of entries that it contains. And that means when you have a balanced tree with about the same number of elements in the left and the right branch for every subtree, you can have a logarithmic time membership testing, which is faster than the linear time that we saw for an ordered list. And that's just taking advantage of binary search. Now why wouldn't we just use a sorted list in the first place and perform binary search on that? Well, it's because adjoining would be slow. Adding an element in the middle of a list takes a long time. If it's a linked list, it's fast, but you can't perform binary search on a linked list. And if it's a regular Python list, then it's slow. But adjoining to a binary search tree is fast as well. Here's how it works. Let's say I want to build a binary search tree that contains all the elements 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and also the element 8. The way I do it is compare 8 to the root, and since 8's larger, we go to the right. Then we look at the subtree rooted at 9. Since 8 is smaller, we go to the left. Then we look at the subtree rooted at 7. Since 8 is larger, we move to the right, at which point we find an empty tree. And so we'd start constructing the adjoined tree set now. We know that it includes a leaf with 8 because that's the element we're adding. We know that element appears to the right of 7, and we know this structure appears to the left of 9. And we keep what's to the right of 9 there as it was before. So we're building a new binary tree with a new left branch and the old right branch. And finally, this appears to the right of 5, so we keep 5, 3, 1 in our structure, but we replace this right branch of the original tree with this newly constructed piece that includes the number 8 as well. Let's write the code. A join takes a set S represented as a binary search tree as well as some value V. If S is btree.empty, then I need to add this element by constructing a leaf. Otherwise, if s.root equals v, then I don't need to add v at all because it's already there. So I can just return s and know that it already contains v. Otherwise, if s.root is less than v, then we know we need to adjoin v to the right branch. That means returning a new binary search tree, which still has s at the root, still has the left branch that we had before, s.left. But now we're going to adjoin s.right and v. 
And finally, if s dot root is greater than v, then we know that v needs to be adjoined into the left branch. So we build a new binary search tree where we adjoin into s dot left, and s dot right stays just as it was. Oops, I forgot to return. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is construct a list of sorted odd numbers. Then I'll build a t, which is a binary search tree that's balanced and contains the odds. So 7's is at the root, 3, 1, and 5 are in the left branch, 9 and 11 are in the right branch. And now I'll adjoin to t the number 8. And you can see that 8 is placed as the left branch of 9. So it's less than 11, which is good, and it's greater than 7, which is good as well. If instead I adjoin the number 3, I'd just get the tree back. But if I adjoin the number 4, then it appears as the left branch of the number 5. Now, adjoining in this way is not guaranteed to create a balanced structure. For instance, if I start out with btree.empty, and then I go through every number in the range 20, and say t equals adjoin tk, I get a structure that is really just a chain, like a linked list. If I print it out, you can see that it has a huge depth. However, if I started out, if instead of at, however, the problem was caused by the fact that I adjoined in sorted order. If instead I had adjoined in some arbitrary order, I might have seen things differently. So if I start out with the numbers from 0 to 19, and I shuffle them, and then I perform the same procedure, where I start out with an empty tree, and then for k and s, I replace t with an adjoined version that has k in it. I end up with a tree that's not nearly so deeply nested. If I print this one out, you can see that instead of having a depth of 20, it has a depth of around 5, which is much more manageable. And that means searching for elements within this binary search tree will be faster than in the long linear chain. An interesting topic in computer science is how to keep binary search trees balanced. But that's something you won't learn about until the next course.